means more list of data. Thank you, Chair. We welcome several elements of the Commission VAT action plan, and we certainly share the Commission's objective of reducing tax fraud in the EU and ensuring that we do not add to the administrative costs for business, particularly for SMEs. Currently, we have a patchwork, a complex system with many derogations, not just on tax rates, but on what rules apply to what. We therefore support the creation of a single EU VAT system based on the destination principle. We believe that the system proposed by the Commission goes in the right direction, although the pros and cons need to be carefully evaluated. The one-stop shop, which is the basis underlying the new system and, and which will enable it to work, needs to learn from the negative experience of this existing mini one-stop shop for digital services, which has put a huge burden on micro-enterprises in the UK and other countries. In that case, we argued for a specific exemption for micro-businesses that are so small that the administrative cost of using the one-stop shop either causes them to stop trading with other EU countries or to stop trading altogether, as we saw in my region in the case of VATMOS. For SMEs, we believe that we need a system of assistance and compensation to allow them to adapt to the new system. We also call for a strong involvement of SMEs in the preparation of the VAT package dedicated to them. The issues of reduced rates for specific types of goods is a complex one, as other speakers have pointed out. The Commission has proposed two options, implying either reviewing the current list of products or granting additional flexibility to member states in setting rates and choosing products. We see the benefits and risks of both options. On the one hand, we are in favour of fewer exemptions and further harmonisation. On the other, we also consider it important that member states retain some limited freedom to adopt reduced rates according to national preferences and responding to national cultural priorities according to the precautionary principle. So we would suggest, sorry, the subsidiarity principle. I've just got the precautionary principle on my mind with Brexit at the moment. So we would suggest a hybrid approach where certain products, either for reasons of equity or sustainability, should be exempted entirely from VAT. And we will be arguing this case for, for feminine products, including tampons, as well as for insulation materials, while in other areas national flexibility should be permitted. Whatever the design of the system, we would be keen to minimise the scope for litigation and the risk of increasing tax competition. We think that the two approaches could be combined in order to avoid risks and that this might actually facilitate agreement between countries in the Council, ever the optimist. Moreover, I see scope for a coordinated EU-wide VAT rate policy as providing incentives to influence consumption of products in a direction more beneficial for both the environment and human health, while also providing disincentives for harmful consumption and also taking distributional consequences into account. This approach was contemplated in studies carried out by the Commission as far back as 2008, and now that we will have significant negotiations in the Council, it's a good moment to put this policy back on the agenda.